Message. My bad, guys. I know I never keep my phone charged. <laughs> That moment when you're trying to go off on live and your phone's not charged. Okay, so let me let me backtrack for all of those who may have missed it. I came home August 1st, 2014. It is June 18th, 2019. I currently have about 40... 42 days of parole supervision left. 42 days. And one person, not my parole officer, not my parole officer's supervisor, but somebody who I don't even understand why they're even involved in my parole supervision is denying my travel to California to work. You wonder why I go so hard for prison reform. Y'all wonder why I have the Remy Ma Foundation and any chance I get to speak about the injustices and the things that's going on when it comes to this judicial system. This is why you have a woman, me, who for four years and nine and a half months on post-release supervision. Mind you, this all started in July, 2007. We're in June, 2019. Four years and nine and a half months on parole supervision without not one incident. I completed all my anger management. I completed all my drug programs. I kept employment. I stayed out of trouble. I paid all my dues because, you know, they make you pay to be on parole. Did all of that. Never once. I had a curfew. I had a curfew. Since the day I stepped out of prison, I still have a curfew to this day. Never once have they caught me out of pocket, out of curfew. Never once have they caught me somewhere that I didn't have a travel pass to be. Never once. Then someone who currently, currently, right now as we speak, had anyone did their due diligence in the investigation, they would have known that it was bullshit. But someone comes out and they cloud chasing. They trying to get a check. So... It goes to the blogs. I ended up having to go and turn myself in for questioning and go through the whole process with the NYPD. But because of social media, before I even got to a police station, because of social media, I had an ankle bracelet placed on, which is a GPS monitor to see where I'm at. I had my curfew, which was already 11 o'clock for the past however long, changed from 11 o'clock to 8 p.m. So I can't leave my house before 8 a.m. I have to be in the house by 8 p.m. Tell me how, how, somebody who has a job, somebody who's trying to finish and complete an album, put out a project. Like, how do you even function like this? Randomly. All of this was set in place. I have to report weekly. Every week, I have to go see them. Why, I don't know. You have a GPS monitor on me, so you know where I'm at all the time. But okay, comply. I submit to them weeks ago. So, travel information, hotel information, the requirements that I need to do that are in California. I get a call and saying the other day that the higher ups are denying it. Now it's so crazy because I say constantly how certain people are mistreated when it comes to this judicial system. And people love, like literally, I cannot count and tell you guys how many times I've been told, oh, you're not special. Oh, you're not, you're not important. You don't get no special treatment because of who you are. But people go out of their way to treat me special. I get treated in ways in this shit that no other parolee gets treated. I was sitting next to somebody who was out on a $60,000 bail. They didn't have an ankle bracelet on. And it was a felony, not a misdemeanor, a felony. They didn't have a, and, and in no way, shape, form, form, am I, would I ever condone that they should have had one too, whatever. It's just, I say these things to show how special I get treated. Even though I'm not special and I don't get special treatment. I sat next to somebody who gets off for parole in two months. 
and it was their last report day. They was never going to come back again. It's their last day they have to report. I have 42 days left, and I bought an ankle bracelet, and I'm coming every week. Every week, these people want to see my face. But let, let me be let me be clear. It's not it's not these people. It's the higher the people that normally are not even involved in the average person who has a post release supervision. So I ask, right? I say, hey, I've been on post release supervision for almost five years. I'll be off in 42 days. I'm nominated for an award. I'm working. I have this contract where they're paying me to host this event. I have this contract where they're paying me to perform. I have this engagement where I have to sit down with the executives at my record label and discuss, you know, how I'm moving forward with my project. I, I, I list it out. I call these people. I have the executives at my label write a letter. I have my publicists and my management send the letters to confirm that I've had these contracts and they've been in place for months prior to any alleged incident. Oh, and if you guys are wondering, you know, how serious it is, the person that you that you guys were looking for, you know, in, in, in my um, parole hearing that didn't show up, because I never got violated at parole. I proved everything that I was supposed to do there, and I, I didn't get a violation. So why am I, you know, being penalized? Why am I still being held hostage within the five boroughs? Now, mind you, this is something that's been going on my entire career. This is one of the reasons why my album hasn't come out because I'm not able to promote the way I'm supposed to. I'm not able to travel the way I'm supposed to. I'm not able to do anything. Thank God it is over in 42 days. But it makes me wonder why, like I'm trying to figure out who do I call because there's a chain of command. I'm calling and I'm emailing and I'm asking, excuse me, okay, there's a chain of command. I spoke to my parole officer. She doesn't have a problem. I spoke to her supervisor. She doesn't have a problem. But the person over her, that person has a problem. Okay, so who do I speak to past that? Nobody knows. I'm emailing, I'm sending out, orders, and nobody's responding. And I feel bad because the same way when a person gets arrested, it doesn't only affect them, it affects their loved ones, it affects their children. It affects, when I'm stopped from working, it affects everyone who works with and around me. So everyone, I apologize to everyone who booked me, who sent me deposits, who's been promoting that I'm going to be at certain events and I'm not going to be able to be there. I apologize to my makeup team who cleared out their whole schedule so that they could travel to LA to make sure that I would be, you know, okay. And I apologize for the missed wages that you, you're going to get. Um, I apologize to my hairstylist who cleared out their schedule to make sure that he'll be able to be there with me and the missed wages that you're going to get. I apologize to my security detail who cleared out their schedule and are not going to be able to get the wages that they're supposed to get. I apologize to my nanny who cleared out the schedule so that you could travel and be with me in LA and you're going to miss wages. No, I apologize to the car services who cleared out their schedule so that they could have me and you're going to have missed wages. No, of course no one's going to apologize to me for the air flights and the hotel bookings and everything else that that I, is not refundable and I won't get back. But I'm just trying to understand when you have somebody who did as much time as I did in prison, who comes home, has a wedding with their husband, has a lovely baby, who keeps a job, completes their programs, pays all their dues, adheres to the curfews, how do you tell this person that they can't work? How? How? Like, who do I speak to? Who's responsible for this? Like, what encouragement does that get? I, I have people who have been home for two years, three years, four years, can't get a job, can't keep a job, catch new cases, out doing drugs, out catching felonies. Also, they don't have an ankle monitor. They're not reporting once a week. Where am I going? Y'all know who I am. Where am I going? Why y'all need a GPS on me? Okay, and if you have a GPS, why am I, Why do I have to be in the house at 8 o'clock? Why can I not leave before 8? Why? Why? What is your... What is... What's the reason? What? What's the reason? Why? How do you justify that? Based on what? At 42 days left. You're not even gonna... This time, you're never gonna see me again in your life. You're not gonna live in the same neighborhood. You're not going to be in the same section on the plane. You're not going to shop in the same stores. You're never going to see me ever again. 
why? Like, because you can? Because you didn't have the authority? And I have a platform, so I'm able to speak out. What about the people who don't have a voice? Do you know what they do to people? They come in and they treat you like you dirt, like you nothing. It's supposed to be rehabilitation. It's supposed to be correctional facilities. It's supposed to be, you know, post-release supervision. They're not supervising. All they're doing is trying to snap, to corner you into ways so that you can go back. They're not trying to help you. They don't want you to have a job. I have a job. I have a well job. I came home and made myself a millionaire again. Again. A millionaire. I showed you how much hundreds of thousands of dollars is at risk. This is my job. I'm not going for leisure. I'm not asking to go to Cali so I could chill, go to Disneyland. I could do that in 42 days. I could go to Thailand if I want to. I'm not asking. I'm, I'm saying I want to go work. I would like to go maintain my livelihood. I would like to go take care of my daughter, my son, and my family. Like, really? Because you can? And then nobody's answering their phones. Nobody's responding to emails. But when you start writing, you start putting that pen on paper in black and white, and they got to answer the higher-ups, then everybody's going to be mad. When I sit on social media and I sit on my live, everybody, everybody's going to be mad. Everybody's panties is going to be in a bunch. Oh, she's on her social media. And she said that no one's just, oh, pull up her chart. No, don't put, you've been pulling up my chart. No. I'm not going to keep being quiet. That's what y'all want me to do. Not say nothing. Don't say nothing. Because you don't want to ruffle no feathers. What y'all going to do? Hate on me more? What y'all going to do? Stop me from getting more money for the next 42 days? That's it? That's it? What you going to do? Try to violate me for nothing? Because I'm telling the world the bullshit y'all be doing? To me? I go to parole. I I'm going to give you a prime example. My curfew used to be 1230. I go to parole one day and I'm speaking to a supervisor who don't know me from nowhere. And he tells me that I missed a home visit. I tell him he's lying. Either you're lying or that paperwork that you're needing is incorrect. No, it says right here, you missed a home visit. I said, could you tell me what date it came? Because I've never ever been out past curfew and had someone miss, miss, miss me. And it says right here on this date, you had a home visit at 11.05. And I said, well, sir, that explains it. My curfew is at 12.30. No one called me and I really didn't have to be home at 11.05. He goes, well, your curfew is 11 o'clock now. The next time we come, you'll be home. Really? Why? Why? Because you can? Nah, we're not doing this no more. Like, I don't know who's in charge. I don't know who's who who's monitoring this, but this Department of Corrections and Community Supervision, y'all need to do something. Y'all need to do something. This is crazy. And I'm speaking for me, but I'm speaking for everybody because I know if this is what they're doing to me, I can only imagine what they're doing to the people who they really think is nobody. You know, because this, this when I when I get people telling me, oh, you're not special. I'm not special. So why are you treating me special? Why are you treating me differently than you treat anybody else? Why? I want answers. I need to know. Why are you mad when I'm advocating for prison reform? Why are you mad when I open a foundation to help people who are released from prison and need housing or don't know how to get their kids back or don't know how to get a job or don't have clean underwear? Why are you mad? Why? 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 Why are you mad? Why are you angry? Like people paid their debt to society. Like y'all, y'all force people. Y'all force people here. I'm so angry right now. Like what do what do I tell the what do I tell the lady who's been making my dress for the past two months? Like like what like. When do when when is enough enough? Tell me, show me, show me. You show, tell me. You looked at my thousand. I say, hey, she's been a problem since she's been home. Hey, this when? How stupid do you feel when the same blogs that that coerced you or the same blogs that inclined you to change my curfew and to change my report date and to give me a GPS money? How stupid do you feel when you read those same blogs? And they talking about the same person that fucking sent you to, to do to these actions. How stupid do you feel? How stupid you gonna look?
when this is when 42 days from now this is over and I'm living my best life how keep not answering your phones like y'all y'all need to this is why I encourage people to vote this is why I encourage people to get into involved into your community and what's going on because you, you, y'all get people in these positions of power and they really be abusing it bro and the sad, you know what's the sad part? The saddest part? They look like this. They look like me, bro. I get the most attitude. I get the most problems. I get the most, oh, I can't wait till she walk in here. How I'm a tree her? From people that look like me. That look like my brother. That look like my husband. For all you dumbasses that's sitting here on my live, going to jail for what? For what? For those that think it's funny, oh, you're a felon, you just, your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, you, nobody's exempt. Nobody's exempt, stupid. That's why I be laughing when I hear people like, oh, you're a felon, you're until it happens to them. So one of their loved ones is, is, is in the hands of the Lord and they ain't got, and they powerless and they getting treated crazy. And you look stupid. Fuck off my life, you clown. Like this, this, this is why y'all, this is why y'all doing bad, bro. This is why y'all doing bad. Y'all think everything is a joke. Y'all think everything is a game. Y'all sit behind these stupid ass. What is gonna be good? Stupid. Struggling. Like y'all think everything is a game. Everything is not a joke. Everything is not for for uh, CC. Don't clout chase everything. Everybody think it's funny until so they stupid ass is sitting in the cell. And you're not gonna get the Remy Ma treatment. You're not gonna get it cleared 